What's up, I'm Ijama, and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I wanna talk about callback functions, what they are, how to use them, and how are they beneficial to your application code. In the past couple of videos that I've been covering the Eboy API projects, I've been using callback functions all over the place for a number of reasons. One, it's virtually impossible to write modern JavaScript without callback functions. And two, callback functions are a great way for you to have more control over your application logic. For example, if I ever make an API network request, I'm gonna be dealing with promises, and since promises don't instantly resolve with data, I'll have to use callback functions to then grab access to that data once available. Well, let's define what a callback function is. A callback function is a function that gets passed into another function as an argument, and then gets called within that function. We can take a closer look at how this happens and how this works with the following example. In this example, I have a function called say something that takes in one argument called callback. Callback is referring to the function that I'm actually going to pass in as a parameter into my say something function. Inside of say something, I have a console log that says I said something first, and then right after that, I'm actually calling my callback function. So if I pass in a function to my say something function, I'm able to call that function within say something. The interesting thing about this is that say something has no clue what callback is. All it's doing is just executing the function. So right after defining the function, I call say something where I pass in an anonymous arrow function. Inside my anonymous arrow function, I'm printing out I said something second. So if I call say something with this information passed into it, what I should see inside of my console is I said something first and then I said something second. One of the benefits of understanding and using callback functions is that you're able to execute logic within scopes that you don't necessarily have access to. Let's say that we never define say something, instead we imported it from an NPM package. We're still able to call our own function inside of the scope of a function that we never defined. And if that function that's taking in our callback function is generous enough, it might even provide some data that lives in its scope and exposing it to our own scope. So we can see that happening with this updated code example where we still have the say something function that's taking in our callback. But instead of calling our callback function without passing in any arguments, we're passing in the new string hello from inside say something and we're waving. This is an argument that's getting passed into a function. So inside of our function definition, we'll have access to that passed in argument. So instead of having an anonymous arrow function that takes in no arguments, we now have an anonymous arrow function that takes in a new argument that we call message. So instead of us printing out I said something second, we're just printing out the message that we got from inside of say something. So inside of our console, we should see I said something first and hello from inside say something. Passing values back into callback functions is a great way for the function that called that callback function to provide more context and details for the callback function to be able to function as expected. So you might not be in a situation where you're creating your own functions that can handle callback functions, but you might be in situations where you've been creating your own callback functions. And we can take a look at some real use case examples. So first we can take a look at the set timeout function. So what's going on with the set timeout function is that it has two arguments. The first is the callback function, and the second is a number of milliseconds that need to be waited until the callback function can get executed. So in this situation, inside of my callback function, I have a print statement that's saying waited three seconds to print this message out, and my second argument is 3000, meaning that I have to wait three seconds in order for my callback function to get executed. So in this case, my callback function isn't expecting any values to be passed over from set timeout into this callback function, so you see that there are no arguments in this callback function. We can also take a closer look at promises, probably the most popular data type that handles callback functions in JavaScript. So here I created a new promise called greeting promise that has the value of new promise. Inside of the constructor of promise, I have a callback function that has an argument called resolve passed into it. Inside of this callback function, I'm resolving the data howdy from this promise. So now that we created a promise that resolves data, we're able to use green promise and then call the dot then function on it. Inside of the then function, we're expecting our first argument to be a callback function. The callback function is expecting its first argument to be the data that we resolved. And then inside of this callback function, we're printing out the greeting that was given to us. So the final console message that we should see is the greeting is howdy from this promise. So this is really great for developers because promises have to probably execute a whole bunch of code, but once it's done, we're able to grab hold of the final value with a callback function where the first argument is the value that resolved. Another example is using the express framework whenever you're building out web servers. So you can see in this short example, I import the express package and then I create a new app with the express function getting called. 
And then I call the function get, which expects two arguments, the first being the route that we are able to hit a get request with, and then the second argument is the callback function. Express returns back to us the request and the response objects that allow us to be able to learn about what data was provided to us from the client's request and what kind of data we want to respond back with with the response object. In the short callback function, all I'm doing is printing out on the server side, trying to get some words, and then I return back out all the words that were found at this API request, which is none. So I'm just returning back an empty array. What's really interesting about this is that we have no idea where rec and res really came from. But all we care about is that rec and res does exist and we can use it for whatever logic we want to perform on the server code that we own. So these are some of the most popular examples that I see for callback functions in JavaScript. Maybe if you're just getting started off with JavaScript, you might have not come across promises or even the express framework just yet, but set timeout is probably one of the first introductions to using callbacks. There are so many other situations and cases where we run into callback functions. You can even think about event listeners for DOM elements. That's it for callback functions. If you have any questions, maybe something was a little confusing in this video, you can leave a comment down in the comment section below. You can also hit me up on Twitter. You can send me a DM. We can talk about this video, previous videos, JavaScript, or anything in between. And also a little shout out to the Evo API project. If you want to contribute to it, whether you're a translator, you're a fluent speaker, you're an engineer, designer, or anyone who has any skills who wants to contribute to this project, I'm going to leave a volunteer form for that project down in the description box below. And with all that, I will see you all in the next one.